Over the last couple of weeks, I've been really digging into Cole Porter's songs for a few gigs celebrating his birthday. And you know what? I think he might be America's greatest ever composer. So let's go over his melodies, his harmonies, his structures, and his lyrics to show you why he is the absolute best. Let's start with his melodies. Now, for the most part, there was nothing overly complicated going on here. They were normally just really simple and really catchy. And of course, simple does not mean bad. I mean, he was writing musicals, right? So you want the music to be accessible, and a really simple, catchy melody is perfect for that. Let's take It's All Right With Me from Can Can. It starts with a really simple melodic hook. Which is then repeated. Then repeated again with an added note and a tiny change in the rhythm. And then they just move the idea up a couple of notes. And that's the whole first eight bars. And it all came from one really simple melodic idea. And he does the same sort of thing in All of You. He starts off just running up a scale, but then we get to a short four note idea. And then he moves that same idea down quite a few notes, but jumps up at the end a massive augmented sixth. And really, the whole way through this song, the melody plays around with that idea and the intervals within it, so the whole thing ends up sounding engaging, but also constantly fresh and almost inevitable, like it had to be written that way. But so far, all of this is pretty standard for American musical theatre composers of that time. But what makes Cole Porter's music stand out, at least to me, is the tension within his melodies that almost subverts your expectations. Kind of like he's rebelling against that musical theatre idiom that he's working within. That short idea that makes up most of the melody in All of You, it's built off a semitone movement, right? And although he moves that idea around a lot and he does change the intervals, it's that uncomfortable semitone movement that sticks in our heads. And that's clearly deliberate, right? I mean, when he uses the idea again, just a couple of bars later, he's developed it by changing quite a few notes, but he keeps that uncomfortable semitone. In fact, this time, the semitone movement actually blurs the tonality a little bit. By emphasising the C-flat, it kind of feels like we're in A-flat minor or maybe E-flat minor, even though we've just had an E-flat major 7 chord, which wouldn't be in either of those two keys. Who does that? And on top of all of that, his melodies are also so easy to swing. The New York Times actually wrote, his melodies have so much mysterious inner propulsion that, asked to swing, they practically swing themselves. And I'm sure that this is part of the reason why so many of Cole Porter's songs, and so many more of his than, say, Gershwin or Irving Berlin's, have become jazz standards that have survived to this day. Fine, some of them do have some cool syncopations already built in, like Anything Goes, but It's All Right With Me is so straight and on the beat in the original Broadway recording. It's the wrong time and the wrong place Though your face is charming, it's the wrong face But the melody still has so much drive in it that it's really easy to make it swing, just like Stan Getz did. But that's enough about melody. I could easily geek out about this all day, but I don't want you to click away from this video. So let's move on to the harmonies he uses. Just like his melodies, a lot of this fits really neatly into the box that is the Great American Songbook. There's lots of diatonic harmony, lots of 2-5-1 progressions, and all that sort of thing. But this is Cole Porter. 
he's going to throw some surprises at you. Let's take the A section of what is this thing called love? Everything about this tune screams minor tonality. You've got a really minor melody, and the harmony is just two, two, five, one progressions in a minor key. But then Cole Porter's like, no, we're actually in a major key. What? And in All of You, the very first chord is an A flat minor. And the melody kind of sets that up to B chord one, to be our tonic chord. But then the very next bar, we get an E flat major seven. And if we were in A flat minor, like it kind of set up, we'd actually have an E flat dominant seven instead. But no, major seven. So, okay, now it sounds like we're in E flat major, and that first chord was just like a heartbreaking four minor. But then this is where he throws in that C flat in the melody we spoke about earlier. And the harmony here ends up being a 2 5 progression in E flat minor. And that just adds more confusion and tension to the tonality. What key are we in? A flat minor? E flat minor? E flat major? It's all really tense and vague. And the song does eventually land in E flat major, but this tension within the tonality adds such a great emotional effect. And also, just like his melodies, it kind of goes against the norms of the genre. But it doesn't stop there. Whereas so many composers in this genre will repeat the harmony whenever they're repeating a section or a part of a melody, Cole Porter kind of avoids that whenever he can. The bridge of It's All Right With Me, for example, it's just an eight bar melody that gets repeated. But on the second time, he changes the harmony from the series of diminished chords you get to start with, which in itself is super interesting and not something you might expect, to a more predictable set of two five progressions. Except it's not predictable because we hear the melody repeat and kind of assume and expect the harmony to be the same as well. But we end up with this. And it's all these interesting little moments and subtle details that make these songs not only so good to listen to, but so fun to play. And it really opens the door up to so many different interpretations. All of You, for example, can be super swinging, just like Nancy Wilson's version. I love the looks of you, the lure of you, the sweet of you, the pure of you. Or you can really steer into the creepiness of that semitone and the tense harmony, just like Harry Connick Jr. I love the looks of you, the lure of you. Both sound absolutely killer because the melody and harmonies that Cole Porter wrote are just so perfect. Now, in terms of structure, this genre is normally pretty set in stone. It's almost definitely going to be 32 bar song form with maybe a verse beforehand. So you get an eight bar melody, let's call it A, which then repeats. Then you get a bridge, let's call it B, and you go back to that A melody to finish. So you end up with A, A, B, A. And Cole Porter did write some tunes like that. Um, what is this thing called love? And you'd be so nice to come home to. Both fit in that mold. But then, just as he broke conventions in his melodies and his harmonies, he also subverts your expectations with a lot of his structures. Night and Day, for example, is a 48 bar form, which goes A, B, A, B, C, B. Still eight bar sections, but it's just so long. 
And the bridge doesn't come in until bar 33, which is after most songs would have already ended. And that's not even his longest song. So In Love has a chorus which is a whopping 72 bars long. And if you broke it down into eight bar sections, which is the normal thing for this genre, you end up with A, B, A, B, C, C, A, D, E. Andrea Rinchari, the guitarist that runs the Live from the Bop Cave live streams with me, summed this up as Cole Porter almost using like pseudo classical structures. He throws out the normal forms of jazz songs or musical theatre songs while still making everything sound like an incredible musical theatre song, and instead does these long form pseudo classical structures. It's another act of quiet rebellion that elevates him above the competition. But there's no way I can talk about Cole Porter's genius without talking about his lyrics. Now, the first time I realised just how good his wordplay was, was when I saw Anything Goes in the theatre. And in the song Bon Voyage, which is sang between a character that speaks English and a character that speaks French, and really the whole thing is going back and forth between English phrases and their French translations, and then you get the line, Now kiss me pretty wench, in English or in French. Great rhyme, scans well, keeps the theme of going back and forth between those two languages, and I'm guessing I don't need to explain the wordplay in that one. And there's a similar, slightly racy undertone in a lot of his lyrics. It's all right with me, for example. Well, it's very clear in the song's title, it's all right. It's not, it's all right. It's two separate words. And this really says that the potentially adulterous feelings that the character is feeling at the time aren't just okay, it's completely right to feel them. Similarly, Let's Misbehave is all about getting it on with someone when no one's looking. And these topics and emotions kind of defy the socially acceptable way for one to live their life back then, but they're also quite universal emotions that almost every adult can relate to. So just like the other things we've spoken about so far, Cole Porter uses his lyrics to rebel against the societal norms of the time. But rather than doing it in a subtle sort of way, he makes it so blatantly obvious, but also so relatable on an emotional level that no one can really complain. It's an absolute masterclass in using art to battle against societal norms. The thing with the songs though, and the reason that I feel he was America's greatest composer ever, is the lyrics are just a sort of icing on an already magnificent cake. Everything else is so perfect and so interesting, you can take the words away and you're still left with incredible pieces of music, almost like they were deliberately composed as instrumentals rather than just being written as vehicles for his wordplay. 